What's going on, my friend? <laughs> Let me tell you, I've, <laughs> I've had so many cars in my life, I can't count them. I don't get anything about it. I bought it at an auction. I had it running for an hour before I, the day before the auction, then I bought it. And then I had it running, you know, to make sure it didn't overheat, no oil leaks, no this, everything was fine. And I put in $20 of gas to drive it, I'm gonna drive it 120 miles. I get 17, no, no, excuse me. I get down the road uh, 10 miles, maybe nine, and the uh, the dash lights start to flicker. No, they're not flickering, they flash, whoop, 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 like that, on and off, on and off. And the I had the radio off, but the radio would come on, it would go off, it would come on, it would go off most unusual and uh i knew something was about to happen and no that no um uh, no engine light came on no check engine light come on at all one thing that did when the lights were flashing the dash lights that included the brake light flashing not that it means anything but that was also flashing and sure enough um i went another five miles and it just shut off completely, completely. And I got over into the breakdown lane and a couple of people helped me push it out of the breakdown lane. And I put it in park and it would not come out of park because there was a complete loss of electrical power, zero. I had my jump box in the back seat, opened the hood, put the jump box on it to give it power. The engine would not turn over and, but it did have juice so i turned the key on put the window down so the door locks would be all right and i pulled it out of park in the neutral and pulled on the emergency brake so anyway that was i don't know you tell me probably five o'clock in the afternoon on wednesday the tow truck came towed it back to an area left it there and then i had another tow truck come in 24 hours later and I was right there with the tow truck because I was doing some other cars. And the tow truck guy says, well, I think I just told you, he put the key in the ignition. Boom, Jesus, it started right up and run perfect. Some, and it did, it had plenty of juice. And, I said, and he let it run for 20, 30 minutes, just letting it run and sure enough, the dash light started to flicker, 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 flicker. And uh, then he put it up on the tow truck before it died. And um, and it shut off. So then, here we are, sat on the tow truck. He took it off last night. Then this morning, again, started right up like there was no problem in the world. Hmm. Okay. And your question to me is what it's could be causing this. Is that correct? Yeah, where the hell do I start to look at? You know, you would say it's a bad alternator, you say it's a bad fuel pump, it's bad fuel. It's got fresh fuel. The alternator's putting out 13.5. The battery is real fresh in it. Okay. Uh, is it a bad ground? Where the hell do you start looking for a ground? I'm just asking. I mean, I'm not the authority. You're the authority. Yeah, I gotcha. <clears throat> so I'm definitely happy to help. And, and uh, thanks for giving me all those details. So. To answer your question, where do you start? Um, there, I mean, you, it doesn't really matter where you start, really, as long as we get to the, the bottom of the problem, right? Let me just ask you a few questions. Have you checked for diagnostic trouble codes in the computer? None. Okay, I did so, not, but the shop that is at put his scanner on it. No codes. Okay, and let me ask you this. Do you, do you have a scan tool by chance? I personally do, but I, I'm, no, I'm home. I'm nowhere near the car at the moment. The car okay, no problem. No problem. I'm just right asking. There. So what you could do is I would make sure that when you, you know, when this problem, I would get it to act up and you're gonna plug your scan tool into the data link connector and you're gonna check for codes and communication when this happens, just to make sure we don't have a communication issue with that main PCM when this happens. Because if we do, this could e indicate either a bad PCM, maybe a power supply problem, maybe a wiring issue, maybe a bad fuse box. By the way, this thing does have an, an ASD or a main relay in the power distribution center left side of engine compartment. And if I, if memory serves me correct, I believe there's a wiring issue 
uh, with those wires either to or from that main relay causing all sorts of odd electrical issues. So just keep that in mind, okay? Another thing you could do too is when on it's acting up. Car. What's it? On that particular car, there's an issue with that? that? That's what I'm showing here, yep. And where is that issue? In, in which box again? It's the main power distribution center under the hood on the left side of the engine compartment. You're gonna have to look for the main relay. And then another thing what you could do too is when this acts up, Make sure you check, you know, the charging system when it acts up, not just when it's running fine, but make sure you, you know, you check it when it's happening. And if, I'm sorry, excuse me, if the, if the charging system is good, the battery it's at, you know, 13, 5, 14 volts when this happens, you can go to the fuses under the hood and inside the vehicle when this happens, and make sure that they also have battery voltage or charging system voltage. So we know the instrument cluster, the gauges are being affected, correct? Well, the okay. Now, when that's a good question. When the dash lights were flashing on and off, mm -hmm. the speedometer needle and the tachometer needle would both go to zero. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that answers my question. So, in theory, let's just say everything else was fine, but the instrument cluster wasn't working like it should. You know, a normal diagnosis for the instrument cluster would be to go to the cluster, check the powers on the grounds going into the cluster when this occurs. If there's no wiring issue, then at that point, um, we would know the cluster is bad. But we know that it's not the cluster because we know it's affecting the entire vehicle, unless the cluster itself is shorting out causing this problem, which I suppose it's possible, but it's not very likely. So my point is, one way to go after this would be to go ahead and check the powers on the grounds going to the cluster or the circuits or the fuses. The power supply is going to the cluster when this happens to see if at, at the bare minimum, if we're receiving low voltage causing this problem or if we have a low voltage or the grounds to see if we got a bad ground causing this problem. So once we've ruled out a power supply problem, a ground supply problem, then at that point that leaves us really with a communication issue between the modules on board the vehicle. And that would be where we're headed. I don't think that's gonna be the case and I hope that's not the case because it's hard to diagnose, but that would be an idea, that'd be something to check. It's a lot of information, I'm sorry. Well, I'll relate. <laughs> No, 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 no. I relayed. I, I, I retain most of it. I'll, uh, when I get to the shop this afternoon, uh, I'll go over that with the, the mechanic with him. And, uh, Jesus, it's just a hell of a nice, nice car. I hope they can find it uh, within a day. I don't want to spend, you know, hundreds of dollars chasing something that's still got a problem. Well, but here's the thing. I totally agree with you. You know, remember, I'm on your side. What you don't want to do is spend hundreds of dollars just randomly guessing at the problem. That would be more expensive. So it, it, it could right. take some time and some labor and, and a little bit of money to diagnose the problem. And yes, at times it could be rather difficult, but it, in the long run, it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be better if you diagnose the problem correctly rather than just replacing oh, parts. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, right. I agree 100%. They could replace this, 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 and this, and you didn't get the root of the problem. I see that a lot, but that's yep. not what I do. Yep. Hmm. By the way, the instrument cluster. Well, anyway, I really... The instrument cluster gets power from the totally integrated power distribution module. It's fuse number 28. There's a um, pink wire with a white stripe. That's your ignition power, and that powers up your instrument cluster. Then you got battery feed that comes from fuse number 10 in the integrated power distribution module. So instead of pulling the cluster, checking the powers that way, the manual, which would be kind of hard, you could literally just go right to those fuses 10 and 28 in the in the TIPM or the totally integrated power module when this happens and just make sure we don't have low voltage there. All right, I'll uh, have them spend, you know, four hours on it. Uh, it goes on long enough. I mean, I hate to... Uh, run this back to another option, but I can't send it to another part of the country where it's worth more money. You know? Right, I gotcha. And keep in mind, make sure they, well, you know, they, they check all of the modules for codes, not just, you know, the PCM or the ECM. Make sure they check every every computer for codes. Okay, I, I haven't found any yet. And even when, um, and it's funny you should say that too, because when I'm sitting there waiting for the tow truck, um, 
I had my backpack with me, and I put on, uh, I took the scanner out and plugged it in. Nothing. Okay. Didn't show anything. All right. Which I thought was very unusual. Right. So just make sure we rule out a, you know, a power supply problem, ground issue, and then we could go after the, you know, the inputs to the cluster but uh, when that happens. But again, don't forget to check commu for communication when this happens. And you can check those okay. wires going to and from that main relay too if you want. Right, right. All right, if there's any questions, I guess I'll get back on the phone. It may not get you, but I'm sure I'll get somebody through that system. Yes, sir, just reply back online. I'll be happy to help. I thank you very much. All right, you're welcome. Good luck, okay? All right, thank you, thank All you, right. bye. You bet, bye-bye.